It's the Rapid Capture Podcast. Welcome back to the Rapid Capture Podcast, episode 10. We've been away for a little while for good reason. You've been away. Well, yeah, well, if we're talking about physical podcasts being away, uh, we've been away for a little while because it has been a while since episode nine. Um, but we'll explain why in a bit and what's going to be happening with the podcast uh, in the future. But uh, as always, it's me, Tyrone, aka Ty Kicks, and Alex Harvey, aka Alex Tench on certain platforms and the Photogrammetry Man on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, let's start with a little bit of an introduction. All right. Yeah, I'm cool. I guess the main reason, well, not one of the, the main, one of the main reasons is I had a bad back. Crippled myself and couldn't go to Tesla in San Francisco with you, so I had to send Joe Harvey to take my place on the Tesla trip where you were filming some immersive video content with them. So that was pretty bad. I was on a few hard painkillers, and um, it all happened because I went bike riding in London and pulled my back bike riding around London. So fully my own fault. Crippled in bed for a bit, couldn't get out of bed. Horrible. Fixed now. Joe took my place. You went and filmed it. How was all that? Yeah, it was really good. I just want to add that I unfortunately forgot to think about getting some violin music for you because oh, okay. every time I moan, you're going to let me know that I'm moaning. Time so, moan. so we wanted the uh, the violins to play for Alex. We well, poor Paul back from biking in London. But um, yeah, yeah. Look, it looks like Ty had a horrible time in San Francisco. <laughs> look, there's a picture of Ty on the screen at the moment. Look, he's, this is a picture that he sent me while he was away. It was away. cold and windy. Like, that's definitely not my normal. I, I wasn't really happy to be in California whatsoever. Really? Oh, yeah, you looked, you looked <laughs> horrified. Oh, yeah, a nice trip to Al- Alcatraz as well for you. I think that you went and shot some content. There were some good historical preservation requirements to go to Alcatraz. And this is Brother Joe Harvey, who stood in, took place, and uh, left a wife at home with four children. So I'm sure that was hardcore for Lou. But the mission got completed then. You shot with Tesla. I think I've got a little clip of the Tesla shooting. Yeah. Want to explain what I'm seeing here? Yeah, so let's uh, yeah, let's elaborate a little bit without loud sounds. So um, we had a challenge set before us by our good friends over at Tesla, uh, particularly Tesla Solar. They, in America, are installing these incredible solar panel tiles onto the roof of um domestic homes basically and using it as energy recovery but the thing with it is that these tiles obviously have current running through them they've got wiring and everything so one of the key things that's really important is that fire services in the u.s know how to manage these and make sure they don't get electric shocks so um yeah for the sake and sacrifice of uh myself and maybe my eyesight uh i engaged in filming in 3d 180 8k um their procedures on how they would tackle these if they were uh on top of a house that was on fire uh and they needed to get in and they needed to vent and open a big hole in the roof it's a little bit different to here in the uk because here in the uk we have more uh brick built buildings they have more timber built buildings and their roofs are a little bit more should we say um not as stable, so they've got to be careful on that. They like to vent, though, through the roof. They're practising venting through solar panel tiles instead of cutting through old tile roofs. Yeah, absolutely, and as you can see in this video, even though it might not be the best quality in the world, they've just got to get a, a, a vented hole done, so they've got to rip that tile off, cut through it, get whatever they need to get open so they can start to vent the fumes and hopefully they can get some water in there now in the uk we don't really do this it's not something that we need to do um i think the houses are far more contained so they can get if they need to vent it they can do through windows and doors but in the us they want to drench the houses they want to get them because they'll just be like tinder they'll just go up so get the roof hole open get some water in there and get it out and so basically that is making an immersive video for Tesla to show at FDIC and in Indianapolis in April. I think that's what the content's for, isn't it? So Christina can have a cool video to show there. Yeah, so uh, one of the, the fire specialists for Tesla um, was the one that wanted to get this done. We obviously are there to kind of help give her the the content she needs to distribute this out to the broader fire community and FDIC being the biggest fire convention in the US in Indianapolis in April is the perfect place to show this off. 
Okay, so while you were there, you went to Alcatraz, but you also, as uh, is custom, you made a visit to Apple Park. Yeah, and, and this kind of harks back to episode nine, where um, we were talking about historical preservation, digital twins, scanning, and obviously we're in that midst of 3D printing. Um, and if you don't know this, go back to episode nine and check it out. Uh, Warwick Town Centre, historic Warwick, Warwickshire in the UK, has a lot of history, and uh, we're creating an AR um, representation of the town and the fire of Warwick. Um, we've got this amazing fully finished now 3D map. But as you can see on the screen up above, and if you're listening, you may not see this, but there's um, there's a model that's the inspiration for our project that's been created at Apple Park uh, in uh, Cupertino in Silicon Valley. Apple's HQ, and it is of their amazing spaceship campus but it's very basic it's nothing too extravagant it doesn't have loads of you know trees and different things like that it's just the buildings but when you wave an ipad over it 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 animates it basically becomes a 3d model with color and texture and animations cars people it comes to life it's amazing it really is but joe is the lead on this historic uh project in warwick and um the accidental trip that he had to take and didn't realize that he was going to be doing it had led to actually being able to do a bit of R&D for the the project that's coming up back at home so yeah we visited Apple Park we had a look around we had a coffee uh it was really good to go and check it out I think Joe definitely saw the benefit of it anyway cool that's good then your trip was successfully completed um another thing from actually Actually, as I was breaking my back in London, I did go to the Natural History Museum. Pictures on the screen now of lots of dinosaurs. So obviously, while I was there, I was doing some photogrammetry scanning. So down the back end of this big hall, there was Charles Darwin. I think he's just hidden behind this, uh, behind the bones on the screen. Was that a whale? I think it was a massive whale, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, really good to scan, but again, the dangers of photogrammetry, come on, now I've got this model, and it's for sale online for $15, so again, look, this was done in, I think it was three minutes on my phone, polycam, um, I also got the background in as well, so you can see me rotating around the image here of old Darwin, he's there for sale, $15, so yeah, he was one of three, I think I've got another little quick video to show the three other scans that I did while I was there, breaking my back. A little bit of audio. Went to London and did some photogrammetry. Now I have these three objects for sale as 3D models on Sketchpad. They all look really scannable. Do you know what I mean? Like they're yeah. all like mod- uh, they're all like statues, aren't they? Really beautiful, the beautifully this scannable. One yes. Looks, what's look like a dog and dragons, and then you've got one that looks is that like a war memorial or something? Yeah, like at the back. Helmet of... and a soldier lying on his back. Yeah, there was a big memorial, and this one was lying on the floor. All sort of like bronze, easy to scan. Like covering his head with a jacket or something I like that. I think he's a fallen soldier. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, so that's just a couple of three scans. And then <clears throat> I've had, I think, no sales. I think it's really bad for sales. I'm going to check. The last one was the iPhone mannequin head, 15th of Feb. But $448 right. sold. Okay, so Ty, you're going to have to start talking about TikTok because I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed. Hang on. There's been something's happened on TikTok. Is that where we go next I, or not? I just want to check my sketch fab and see whether I've had any sales because I don't know if I've had any sales. I, I've been too preoccupied with being in California. Rubbish. Um, yeah, yeah. Sales have been barren. I think the last sale I had was on the seventh of February. So pretty not pretty much shocking, at all. Then. Really, no. It's been very dormant considering how much I had. Uh, on the last podcast, I sold loads. So yeah, it's peaks and troughs. It's always the way. But what is definitely a trough for me most of the time and pretty shocking most of the time is my tiktok channel and alex is the key oh. to tiktok when it comes to <clears> between <throat> me and him we're going back to tiktok stats and yeah so alex held the overall record uh for uh, a single video uh view count of what was it 12.6 mil yeah in florida 12.6 mil um someone firing a machine gun inside virtual reality Went mad overnight, four mil overnight, and then, yeah, that was my biggest hitter. But I, Ty was trying to keep something secret from me, but I found out by looking on his profile. <laughs> he I had found a it new. For this podcast. He for had found a new uh, filter for his phone. You can tell us about that first. Yeah, so. Oh, by the way, last 60 days, 23 million views. 
Yeah, last 28 days for me is 25 million views, just so, to let you know. Yeah, <laughs> on, last 25, on last 28 days? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's like, oh, no. Rubbish. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I um, I was on LinkedIn. Filter. I was just, like, looking around, and I came across these guys that were in their office wearing snorkels and masks, and they were, like, underwater. Initially, like, you know, you take one look, one second, and you think, what the hell they're underwater but uh soon obviously came to realize it was this iphone filter it requires lidar so it needs to be the pro model iphones as far as i'm aware um to be able to kind of like create this amazing water effect yes there's some inaccuracies if you're really going to get picky about it but actually it's probably one of the best water filters i've ever seen well, you can talk about it now, but yeah, this is the so, filter we're talking about. Yeah, so this obviously looks like on the screen we've got a video from Alex's account which shows a was it Defender. Land Rover, Range Rover Defender. Can't Defender. Remember. Uh, and it's like, it's in a big pool of water. It's like up to the, the lights over the wheels. That's the filter in action. <clears throat> yeah. So you went playing away with this secret filter that uses LiDAR. Yeah, uh, and, and to be honest, I didn't exactly go out to really do anything extravagant with it or think through what I was going to do. So the initial one that I did was... Uh, a Domino's pizza while I was waiting for a pizza to, to yeah. Be so you went and saw Domino's and, pizza and, and filmed, and then did a quick video saying that they they flooded, but they were still open, <laughs> which really, in some ways, would not happen because of electrocution and also hygiene. But uh, put that on TikTok, and that eventually did six point four million views. That's the Domino's pizza. Yeah, and and to be totally truthful, you know, I never thought it would do a million views. I never thought it would do half a million views. For it to do six point four million views was amazing. But obviously it was disappointing because I'm like I'm nowhere near Alex's twelve point six million view video. We're showing the Domino's one on, on screen now. So on the screen, yeah, you just I'm at the counter waiting for my pizza, I'm just waving the camera around and the flood water's probably up to my I'd but you've raised guest. it on the app. It lets you raise yeah. the flood water higher, which works really well for the lidar. Seeing these walls everywhere around, yeah, and the, the reflections underwater look fantastic. But mm -hmm. uh, obviously, but it, th there are just things in it. If you get a chance to see it, go over to ty ty underscore kix uh, on TikTok, and you can see it. It's really cool, the filter, but it, you know, it's not dirty. It would have like loads of bits in it, particles. Maybe they should have that floating around mud. And the amount of comments I got saying pizza boxes would float. Yeah. So no pizza box. But then do you know what? It's the Alex Harvey tactic of make people comment. How do you make people comment? And the biggest thing about it is making people comment by the inaccuracies of why yeah. this isn't a real flood. You could have said, here we are in Pizza Hut, and it would have gone really well. I know, maybe I should have done that as well. People would have gone, that's not Pizza Do Hut. Do the same so, one, Pizza yeah. Hut. I did it with a Defender and like a Freelander. They got it, I got it wrong, yeah. and they tell you off on TikTok. So then I did a follow-up to this one, which was just saying that the Domino's Pizza was still flooded, but not as bad. And that did 1.7 million views uh, just there. Um, and uh, yeah, it still looks pretty good, but the water's outside of it this time. I think it's better indoors. The lidar bouncing off the wall shows it yeah, better. Yeah, definitely. And then it's like slippery when wet sign on the floor. That would have been uh, floating. But what happened after that? So then, yeah, so obviously prepping to go down to uh, San Francisco, uh, going to Heathrow to go to San Francisco. And we stop at uh, like a road stop services. And um, at Starbucks. Uh, and we went in to grab a Starbucks. And I thought, oh, I'll just do the same there. But the difference this time was I thought, what I will do is not only is it still open, commend them for working, so call them heroes, mm -hmm. and then also slowed the footage down a little bit. Some of the comments I got on the Domino's one was, there's no way people walk around that fast in water. They look like they're walking too fast. Nine so, seconds as well, this one. So I made sure it was short, snappy, and slowed down the last clip, and it's done 17 points. Four million views now. God's sake! So you've definitely you've definitely Boom. beaten me. I need to hide in the corner. You've beaten me on views. I'm still winning on followers. Oh, absolutely. The, the okay. stats don't lie. Alex is way ahead of me on that side of it. But if I'm brutally honest, like I will say, I'm, I'm a bit frustrated, really, if I'm honest, about the fact that uh, I got I got a year's supply of pizza from Dom, uh, Domino's, and your followers has gone up from three four thousand to twenty thousand. Two and a half. I only two had two and, and a half thousand followers, okay. and now I've got nearly twenty. So I'm at nineteen point five. Yeah, it was at nineteen point four this morning. Well, it's good seeing these videos now. These latest ones are all having a better view count than normal ones that you do. Yeah, but I think I've got to retire the the flood app now because I think I've yeah. overused it. Okay. Uh, I've I don't think it's going to get the views that I want to. So back to normal videos. Uh, everyone can be relieved if you've seen my video be viral. 
uh, it won't. There won't be many flood ones unless I absolutely need to. Or they update the app and do something else cool with it. Yeah, you can add objects in floating around the water. That'd be cool. But they don't move with the water. That's oh. the problem. I put bowling balls in one for the bowling. You could have put a pizza box in. Scan a pizza box. I looked for a pizza box. I actually tried to do that. And that would be good. The, the, the only pizza box, you'd be hilarious, like laugh at this. The only Domino's pizza box available on Sketchfab or, uh, was not free. And it was by our good friend at Black Fire Films. Oh, John Davis. <laughs> yeah. We should have gone and got it. I know. It's not, I have to buy it. So, um, okay. I should have requested. To so, see that's a good TikTok up. update then. You've had a smasher that's hit mine. You followers have gone up. There is one. Now problem. you're trying to monetize. There's one problem that I, if anyone's listening who works at TikTok, especially TikTok UK, I tried to add myself to the creator fund and i can't get on it maybe like it's because i made like the me. error of trying to sign up thinking i could sign up anywhere and realize that it's not available in america you probably shouldn't and, have been showing off in america trying and to now i'm stuck because it keeps saying that i'm not in the right region to join it every time i try it won't let me so yeah I've made no money from these videos by the way i'm not sponsored by Domino's, nor am i starbucks i was just very lucky they it's were interesting though it. you should be these are the type of hits that people like Starbucks and Domino's dream about having on their social medias. I don't think don't think Domino's has ever had a hitter that's gone over four million. It 4. just 5 proves million, so. the thing when we were we were debating whether it is the followership of your account or the virility of the video. And I reckon it is the that combination of the music, the app what you're using, what the video is. You can have a big hitter on TikTok yeah. and not have 10 million followers. I think that what will happen and what has happened as a side effect of having more followers, though, is like you've said, every video you post now seems to get a fair amount of views. Like, it doesn't necessarily mean it ne it goes into the millions, but... Yeah, but you know, 40,000 on the last one. Yeah, but even if you got, like, 2,000 or 1,000, yeah. as opposed to 12... As opposed to back what, down you, here. You know, if you go right back down, it's like a couple of hundred. Sometimes things didn't even hit the hundreds, yeah. you know. So it's like, obviously, the more eyes on it, the more views you'll get, but it doesn't necessarily mean it'll go viral. That's that's the key to it, really. It's cool. And if we're looking at it from a marketing point of view, we've obviously got a River account as well. When we try and post things on there that are much more related to the business, whereas these are all about things we're doing probably mine are mainly to do with the business as well ours are just social are... experiments aren't they really mm -hmm. it's just to find out how the um the particular platform in this case how it works tiktok but we obviously put some on youtube shorts as well and the yeah. other, other profiles and instagram stories and reels yeah. each one works i basically use the tiktok editor now quite a lot more than the premiere rush editor on my phone yeah yeah I've even gotten used to it, and I absolutely despise you it. You hated it. I remember absolutely. you saying, I'm not using that app. That app thing's rubbish. There's definitely things they can still improve. There's definitely a few things in there that I would like to have, but it, it is what it is. So, um, Okay, that's good. TikTok then. Cool. So, yeah, we've, we've gone through that, which is great. I'm just going to sort of just quickly check uh, a couple of things. So, we, we also went to a show last week, didn't we? We were at a security policing show. Okay, so I'll put that on the screen. Yeah. We Some can show things. a still image on the screen at the security and policing show. This is in Farnborough, Farnborough Airport. We have created, this is now like the fourth scene for DSTL. We create a lot of counter-terrorism, uh, immersive, photorealistic VR training scenes for them. And this was a culmination of about a year and a half's work from the River team that put this build together, which allows you to... Uh, examine and investigate an explosion after after the aftermath of an explosion um, and then they put it in the setting of like um, a london environment but it was amazing seeing people using that build uh, because it's been so sort of secret for ages we couldn't talk about it um yeah great to see everyone at that uh, at the show using using all of the investigate tools inside yeah, I think also you being able to kind of have a little bit of a talk with some of the, the attendees there was quite handy because you were kind of aligned with um, some of the people that we work with, with the police and things like that. And and the reality is, is that that really shows a level of validity validity to VR as a training tool, as a mixed learning tool. You know, we're going back into obviously what River as a company does best, which is create photorealistic environments, whether it be for fire, whether it's for police, whether it's for government, military, whoever. You know, that is the goal of what River does and does very, very well um, and is recognised for it, hopefully um, around the world. I'm almost certain around the world. And, um, 
you know the the opportunities are there to do so much more um it's just you know who's out there and what do they need so this was on the stage we did a little talk on the <clears throat> on the final day we did a talk um about the t- the scene that we had made um and this is Jez on the left and Andy on the right from DSTL um, but it was a weird one because you had the headphones on so it was like those silent discos where you talk to people and you're <laughs> hearing yourself back talking which is interesting but you were getting told off Ty no photos at this event please this was before I got told off so that's oh. fine that's the last photo that we can show and that's okay, it yeah. and, and obviously anyone listening they can't see the photos it's fine so it's all good and um, that show went went really well okay um, I missed off I missed off something else to talk about but that was the security and policing show last week three days yeah yeah and then um you then had uh in one of the evenings last week a history talk mm-hmm. as far as i believe talking yeah. about what we've been doing with history yeah so back to the 3d scan 3d model 3d printed model of warwick that's half of it finished it's actually finished now but yeah on the screen now you'll see this little event this is about like the fourth fifth event we've done like this where we have um, a local history uh, group ask us to come and do a talk about the things we found to do with Warwick and the tunnels and the scanning that we do with models like these. This is the Abbey in Kenilworth, the second time we printed. We actually, this was the Kenilworth History and Archaeological, Archaeological Society, and Ross gave them a model of the Kenilworth Abbey that he'd scanned, so it was quite cool to give them a free present. Um, but yeah, we showed some VR of the tunnels and we talked about the things we'd found um, in Warwick with the tunnels. And yeah, we'll do these more. But there was just a few photos from that event. Yeah, and obviously we're following on from episode nine where we were kind of mainly talking about how this project was developing. And now that we've managed to complete the full map, it's looking great. Uh, A lot of the testing uh, of the AR model itself uh, on the iPads look great. We've got some amazing narration of some of the stories related to the Great Fire of Warwick, and this will be installed in the very near future. Where? Whereabouts? In Warwick Museum, there in the square in Warwick. Um, yeah, you'll be able to go and um, hold your iPad over it and uh, see the model come to life. Mega, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, Anything else on so my photos? No, I think that was a lot. I'd oh, say that- there was. Oh, what's this then? What was Sorry. this? Sorry. One more thing. I went to Northampton Uni. Northampton? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and did some more photogrammetry teaching with the students there. Spoke about things that River have been creating over the last sort of five years and taught them using Polycam and Reality Capture. Same as we did in um, LA. Showed them how to use the app and get things into AR and VR on the same day. Mega. Yeah. So the last thing in this sort of section of the podcast is uh, just finishing off talking about planning towards FDIC Indianapolis. The uh, content that I went out to go and capture with uh, Joe, Alex's brother, uh, is kind of going to be processed and created into uh, some really, really cool pieces of 3D 180 uh, VR content that's going to be demoed at FDIC. If you are a UK firefighter or uh, any firefighter from anywhere around the world attending FDIC, um, come to the Tesla booth, come and check it out. It is interesting content to see. There's more than just that content as well. Can't give away some of the other content that we have. Oh, we might do something else secret with Tesla for that event. But uh, there is some really cool virtual reality content. And do you know what? If you've never been to FDIC, which is an amazing um, event showcasing a lot of uh, technology and fire, and it's not purely just for fire. People bring their kids along to it. It is an amazing event over three days in Indianapolis. I know it's a long way to go, but yeah. I Last time I went last year, I thought it was a brilliant show. It's massive. There's huge trucks showing you technology and fire as well, so... Yeah, definitely worth going. And oh, look, there's a photo of us. We're really looking forward to it. And yeah, uh, with our good friends. That was last Tesla. year. Yeah. Was it last year? Yeah, yeah, it was last year. Okay, so we're going to do a bigger. <clears throat> we're going to do a bigger show this year in Indy. Yeah, hoping to do some, uh, some maybe some AR there too. Who knows? Look at you with your five one one hat on, brown. Shows the twenty three on the side. Look. And on this picture, he's got his black one, 22. Security and policing. Happy days. He went back and asked them at the stand just if he could have the military brown one. Now he's like showing it off with his river top. 5'11". Not jealous. We need 5'11 river clothes. Not jealous at all. (laughs) No, you could get 5'11 river. That'd be quite cool. I I also walked into the office today to everyone jumping on me telling me I'm going to be given a new Android phone. I use iPhone for my scanning. 
But now he's gonna have a, he's gonna have two phones now <laughs> for live streaming. So happy days. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a new phone. Pixel it depends, though, six ha- might have to be. Can you do live streaming on LinkedIn? Because that'd be the only social platform. Yeah, we that's one we need to we need to fire up and try the LinkedIn special, live. Special work phone only. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, monitor, I'm having a monitored phone given to me by the office. <laughs> yeah, Alex is going to be on a leash. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just quickly following on from the Tesla chat a minute ago. This yeah. is last year at the show, FDIC. Uh, Riverlink being used on the Tesla stand. So they're going to do that again this year. It's going to be Riverlink and Flame on the Tesla stand at FDIC. Hopefully a bigger booth this time and some more Tesla merchandise. Hopefully. Okay, yeah, we're going to get some Hot Wheels cars. We had wicked Hot Wheel merchandise Tesla cars. Mega merch. Okay, next subject. Right, so we're on to, as we always do in every uh, Rapid Capture podcast, we're on to the XR News. Okay, so Tyrone sent me some links of things that I've never looked at ever before and I click on them and we open them on the big screen. Like the first one. Yeah, so some of these are not necessarily fresh off the press, but obviously we haven't discussed them. We haven't been back since episode nine. So uh, the biggest one is that Meta have confirmed that they are cutting back on VR. I think they're kind of trying to backtrack on the Metaverse rhetoric as well. And they are Mm. unfortunately going to be letting go of over 10,000 more jobs after they actually let go of like 11,000 jobs not that long ago as well. Uh, they've also confirmed the cancellation of a few headsets as well. Um, How many employees they got? Is 10,000 a big hit or not? It's a Can big, I it is check a big this hit. straight away? It is a big hit for a company like Meta to have to release so many, should we say, probably really talented people. Do you know what I mean? Like the amount of people, I, I would say, especially if they're in set departments, like in VR at Reality Labs or... Um, you know, they're working on AR related glasses and things like that. You know, all these people are highly talented staff. And so from that standpoint, you're letting go of what, by the looks of it, a, a massive chunk. Well, September 22, there was 87,000 staff and they let go some. They let go 13% of the staff, which took them down to 75,000 staff. So although you say 10,000... That's about the same sort of percentage, isn't it? I oh, know. Or is this another cut? Is this another layoff? No, no, no. Yeah, it's another layoff. So, so they let go of September. 11, so they've let in total twenty one thousand okay. have been laid off in total. Okay, and that was thirteen. So it's about twenty percent. Yeah, that's a pretty hefty sub. I know, but when you, you know. sa- but when you say ten thousand, but look at the headline. I know, but how many ten thousand? Additional layoff. Yeah, we got twenty staff. Here, right? <laughs> if you if you had a hundred, it would be how much uh, well, more seven... productive would we be with just a hundred staff? Yeah, but they've got seventy five thousand. Now they might have sixty five thousand. Yeah, yeah. Still I, I a good the, the number. The reality is, is but that yes. actually they've got more than enough staff to be able to do the jobs. The real, the, the sad fact is, it's going to be a lot of people that either been there a long time or are really talented, and unfortunately, it's based on the division you're in. Yeah, but so... also, do you remember when John Carmack left? Um, Meta, yeah, yeah, and what did he say? He said that most of the staff at Facebook are at about what did he say? It was like very low, low capacity, low anyway. capacity, they could do a lot more. I think yeah. that's what he was saying. And the mentality in the company was just to be a bit slow and not use as many fast people as they can. Bear in mind also that Meta, obviously, being the parent company of Facebook, Facebook has had a lot of decline in its uh revenue streams from advertisement and it's not really growing like it used to. It's you know, it's definitely fighting being TikTok. Of, uh, yeah, being a bit of a fight with the social platform. So the reality is that Meta are letting go of maybe a lot of people that are in areas that aren't needed anymore anyway. So these are things we don't know, but where it affects us is probably more in the world of VR, XR, AR, MR, all the Rs. Um, this is a nice graph. But Meta headcount, that's cool. But the one thing that is good is that there's been a price drop in Quest 2 and Pro. So they've done another price drop. What, 399 was Quest 2? Uh, it was up higher than that, I think. And then they've they've dropped. In America, it's gone to 425 or 429, something like that. Quest Pro has gone down to $999 or £1,250 okay. here in the UK. Cool. Um, so, yeah, price drop, uh, but still, still expensive for the Pro. Still really cool to be able to... Throw this headset on and be full color pass through and see you still. Yeah, and, and it, doesn't you know get, what? it doesn't get boring. That doesn't. The one like, thing that's really cool is that while we were out in California, this will make Alex jealous. We got to go lives. up to where Reality Labs were 
and we went and visited the Meta store that they've got there. It's it's not anything fancy. It's a small test store with, obviously, you can buy a headset there. You can buy the accessories there. You can do some demos there. It is really cool. They also sell the, you know, the Facebook Ray-Ban story glasses as well. Mm-hmm. Um and I bought the full interface for this, which they should have given for free. I want a refund for it, if I'm brutally honest. Shout at Meta, because yeah. Tyrone wants a refund. I, you know, when you're paying top draw for these headsets, you know, I want a refund for that interface. It's only $50. They could have given that for free, definitely. It feels nice. Yeah, it's good. There's a tiny bit of light leak around your nose, but I think it's a much better interface than just those blinkers on the side. Mm-hmm. It feels good. So, yeah, really, really good. Um, and they come off nicely, yeah, just it's uh, magnet. Pull just pull it. Now. Yeah, just pull it. It's magnet. Easy. Okay. Easy peasy. Yeah. Really cool. So, yeah. So, uh, that is uh, one bit of meta news. We have got another one in a minute. But uh, let's go back to some heritage tech. Uh, and Google have finally killed Google Glass. Not Everyone thought Google Glass was dead a long time ago. But um, Google have kept what was their first adventure into what is XR was more like augmented reality. Um, Google Glass was a product that just wasn't the most successful because people were really worried back then of the privacy when it first released. There's like a camera attached to it. It's like 2012. People were like, oh, this is invading my privacy. But they carried on making them for enterprise. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, so it's been been still available for enterprise for a long time. And it's and, pretty uh, dog toffee then. Um, but they've decided that it's time that uh, it, enough's enough. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they won't make anything ever again. But um, I'm almost certain that Google are trying to catch... Uh, open AI and uh, chat GPT and uh, Microsoft in the AI wars at the moment. So I don't see them switching back to XR uh, quite so soon. I think Google need to make some fast switch so that they can show some sort of uh, competitor to chat GPT because they still haven't released them. It feels like it should just be part of Google search. Well, they did, but it got it wrong. It got information wrong almost instantly. Oh, so they took they, it down. Yeah, so they kind of have to go back to the drawing board. It's called Bard, B A R D, <coughs> and it's um, their version. But the, the, you know, the, the levels of integration need to start happening pretty soon if they want to stay in touch. Because Microsoft has started doing it. They've just started to integrate it into all of Office. So you'll be able to go into um, Microsoft Word. And just get Chat GPT to write your work in the word processor. <laughs> and then just And you better do that in a VR headset. No copy and pasting. You just literally just go, This is what I want, write me some text. Make it look neat. Yeah. Make sure there's no spelling mistakes. And the thing that's crazy is that there are websites popping up now that will allow you to copy and paste your Chat GPT uh prompt, verb, prompt. and you can then un AI it to make it be passable mm-hmm. for a human piece of text. That's cool. As opposed to AI tests saying 100% fake kind of thing. Or then soon they'll fake. build that into it, surely. Like, I, I, rewrite it for me well, into something that doesn't look like chat's writ it. Well, something, it. something that I haven't added into this, but obviously is just uh, been released, is chat GPT-4, which apparently has got some amazing features. Chat GPT-4, as opposed to chat GPT-3 or 3.5 or whatever it was, it can now recognise images. So you could draw a picture on a napkin of like a website you want to design and you could just paste that onto chat gpt4 and I saw it can that. do some coding to create something like that which i is saw normal. that you know how you gave it a photo of a seesaw with a weight above and an apple on the seesaw and it said if the weight drops the apple will move yeah and, like and the other thing was taking they took a photo of someone's like cupboard food cupboard uh, or fridge and it said, what can I make out of this? And it, sh- it, you know, it could see all the ingredients from the picture and it gave you suggestions on what you could make with mm-hmm. what was in there. So I guess that- that's a similar thing to Google Lens. When you go to Google Photos and click yeah. Lens, it looks searches the photo for other Potentially. Um, potential things that look the same. Yeah, so uh, I've digressed off. So let's go back. This is going back to Meta, but more about Quest 2, Quest Pro. Something that a lot of people have been wanting and, you know, when you talk about hand tracking, it's amazing to be able to not have a controller and you can just use your hands to do certain interactions, but it's never been touch. So when I say touch, you know, you you know, if there's like a button in the VR space that you're looking at, 
you can't just press that button. You kind of have to use finger interactions and pinches and stuff. So it's almost like your hands are controllers. Now it's almost like your hands are actually able to touch a physical button Push. or type on the keys. You know, direct touch UI navigation has just been introduced and I had a go on it today. And it is really, really interesting. Like uh, something that... Can you do a keyboard like with you your finger? Can, yeah. You can have a whole keyboard and you're just typing away in midair. Um, maybe not really fast touch typing, if I'm brutally honest, but you can touch and type out a URL. That's that's a game changer when it comes to being in VR. The ability to sort of type out a full-blown URL without having to go onto a keyboard and go pinch, pinch, pinch to all these different letters and numbers and characters and symbols is, is just amazing. So that's great. That's a really good update. And um, it really would not surprise me if that's something that Apple's been looking at with their impending headset. Yeah, they'll probably have some crazy headset that has a chat function and touch all in one. You know, and it'll be like, oh, Apple made VR that had chat touch GPT in it. Oh, just to let you know as well, and if I was to do a pub quiz, I, I probably could cheat. I now have got chat GPT on my Apple Watch. You mean on your laptop that's on your wrist? I love it. It's amazing. But yeah, I've got this new app called PT. His battery only lasts two days, but if you get a Fitbit like this... The battery lasts a week. And the strap falls off all the time. So, um, yeah, I can go on to here and I can literally go to PT. It says, ask me anything. I can go on there. I can't show it on PT, the screen. what do you mean? P-E-T-E-Y. That's his name. P-E-T-E-Y. P-T. Okay. Uh, that's the name of like Siri. It's but... the app, yeah. And so you can... Is it an Apple thing or not? No. It's a separate application. And you can do the dictation. So I can just press the dictation. It will write it out yeah. with the text and ask the question or do whatever, or I can type it on my laptop on my wrist. It's nice to see and, uh, stuff coming out on watches. Go. So, and then it will just do straight off chat GPT. You can copy and paste out of it. Yep. You can send it anywhere okay. off my watch. The pain at the moment for me on chat stuff is logging onto a browser window on my phone or on a laptop, yeah. logging into Google and then bringing up my chat things like the AI prompts or whatever you want to call them. That's a pain. They need an app. Yeah. So I could go on here and I could ask it any question or get it to do what it does on the on the main app and just say, like, write me a post on LinkedIn about this or, you know. That's like mental having that power in your pocket, though, now. Yeah. On your wrist. Who founded Oculus? That's the same as asking Google Search, though. Yeah, but they will... No, but like something like Siri would go and show me a load of web pages. Oh, Siri is the worst. Yeah. If you ask Siri anything... It shows here, look, Palmer Lucky... Brendan Irab. Imagine uh, if it said Alex Harvey. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like that was that was pretty instant though. That was pretty. Quick. You don't pay for that either. Uh, three ninety nine. Oh, what for the app? Yeah, but then I've does got they pay to chat to uh, they that? Must do out of the the uh, um the, the way they've integrated it into subscriptions. That app. It's got its own little personality because I said, "Who are you?" and it went, "My name's Petey." So okay. interesting. Ty's got a new friend. Ty's got a new best friend. Yeah. Anyway, moving on from that, um, again, digressing off, we are on to probably the most uh, up-to-date piece of news, which uh, came uh, yesterday. HTC announces inside-out tracker for VR accessories and body tracking. This is the first time it hasn't required any base stations or anything. It will it's the do same it. as those controllers. Pretty much, yeah. It's going to utilise cameras to be able to track you. Wait, is, is it a puck? What's this? Is it yeah. a headset? Puck? Yeah, no, I think you could attach it to anything. And so it's like the track Vive tracker, but with cameras? Yeah. Pretty much. Vive Tracker that doesn't need any lighthouses. No. Okay. Which is pretty good for the XR Elite. That's exactly what it's clearly going to be for. Or not that I've had an opportunity to really go over the. Um, I wonder the actual... if, what you can have like twenty of them or. Yeah, I think that you'll be able to kind of like have a look and and see. Um... That's cool. The fifty percent smaller than the Vive Tracker. Yeah, really, really small. Really. Um lightweight i've heard as well uh and obviously it's going to help with, with pc self... vr and, and and obviously it's going to work with the elite as well so. self-tracking tracker that is a good little sentence absolutely htc vives self-tracking tracker amazing good idea really, great really. that is because yeah, they were always a faff to link these to base stations when you've got like six of them people we used to clip them on the end of a fire hose and then 
map the fire hose to it. Yeah, and I'm really so, yeah, hoping we'll, cool. we'll get an XR Elite in to the, the studio soon. So when we do, we'll have it in here in the podcast and we'll show you what we saw at CES this year uh, when we got a nice little red carpet rollout from HTC to come and uh, have, have a look at it. Have we shown this to the dev team that are in that room over there? No. Oh. Super news. They might like that. Okay. Super new news. Cool, we'll go and show them that soon. Absolutely. Uh, and I imagine that probably would work maybe with the focus three as well potentially um maybe i don't know that'd be interesting for stuff we've done with axon yeah cool. okay so Tech there's an honorable mention. mention to this which i find really interesting actually and that is that um for a long time there was this talk and this is going more to techie gadgets more than uh vr xr that their the requirement to do drone delivery had been like in the works for years, hasn't mm-hmm. it? And that uh, Amazon had been talking about doing it for a long time. This thing called Zipline, which Mark Rober, who's a massive uh, YouTuber, used to work for NASA, Apple. He's a super brainiac. Uh, seems to be advocating this. Like, uh, I remember Amazon Prime Air. Yeah, and the thing is, it was a bit loud and a bit cumbersome, and they were huge, and I don't think that many people felt confident of having something like that. Yeah, oh, land this was around. the other option, land and drop it off outside. Whereas this new thing called Zipline is a quiet drone that will fly over, and it will drop a payload on a tether. And the thing... What about uh, a weight limit? I don't know about the weight limit, but what I do know is that it has um, the ability to manoeuvre itself uh, on the line. So it has like a, it has some props built into it and it will be able to sort of lower it down. As you can see on the video, if you're watching, if you're not, it's this little kind of little thing that's attached to a tether from the drone in the air. It's got a fan on the back and it can manoeuvre itself into the perfect position to just drop its payload and go. So this could be a game changer for cold food, that gets delivered that Alex hates. Cold food, yeah. This will be an update for your cold food delivery. <laughs> okay, I like it. It sounds interesting. We often spoke about this in the past to do with drone in a box and how the hell would drones deliver stuff. <clears throat> I often thought that people might have a drone shoot on the roof or something that the drones can drop the parcels into on people's roofs, but maybe that's not going to be the way now. Maybe this is the way. Tethered tethered to a drone dropping down your parcel the only thing i can think of is great idea weight limit yeah and i don't think they're going to be big packages look it looks like food i think it may be the next step for food delivery potentially you know you can get to someone's house from the food place super quick but you know there's not going to be any of those dirty delivery bags that al likes to go and make tiktoks over with the uh the pandemic oh, as he called it we should go and do that food again driving. soon yeah the uber driving pandemic <laughs> where everyone orders food to the house this is going to make the pandemic even worse well, I don't know, because you almost imagine that this company might corner the market in delivery. So it's in it that you can do the ground ones and get cold food, or you can go for zip line and get nice warm food that gets to you quick, and you could even drive to the actual place itself. I'm still interested about how they're going to load your curry onto that. Where the hell does it get loaded? Does that fly to the curry house? Drop down the line or um, McDonald's. No, I don't know. These are the things that we need to kind of do a little bit more homework. How on. does that keen. plane hover above a house? Uh, this is a video that you need to watch. I sprung, I sprung this on Alex as a last minute thing. To be fair, initially it was being used, I think, to try and um, oh, ship vaccine. vaccines around. That makes or sense. Blood, or you know, like for emergencies, maybe even potentially uh, transplant um, organs. Who knows? But ninety seconds from uh, X position to another position seems like it's a pretty quick thing. That looks cool. Yeah, I'm it's impressed. like getting catapulted. <laughs> this, yeah, I'm going to watch this video then. We're going to have a look, little look at that. Cool. That looks interesting. Okay, so that was the XR news. Okay. So, to be honest, like main topic wise, I think we filled out the entire podcast with so much back stuff that we have not been able to get across to you since episode nine. That we, you know, we've done pretty well. So realistically, we don't have like a big main topic, but we I was going to sort of say, you know, uh, you know, we're updating the AR model. We are now kind of at the back end of that. Now we've managed to print it all out, which is pretty amazing. So we've talked a little bit about that. Uh, and then maybe kind of how River and XR are going to expand into 2023, 2024. Don't know if Alex has any more news on that stuff or not. Well, this I'm just putting on the screen a little bit more of the augmented i know we keep going on about it but it is really cool to be able to see this animated fire 
the route of the fire of Warwick in 1694 going over this AR model. So, well, we, we can't talk too much about the other projects, but we've now, after this, got three or four other interested parties, hence my visit to London um, museums and art galleries. Um, lots of people now want to do this more, and we're off to the... We were talking about the Royal Ballet, but we're also going to Belgrade Theatre tonight, and we're going to go and do some more stuff with them. So AR and VR um, is such an emerging thing still at the moment. A lot of the time we just go out there and show people the differences between the different types of virtual reality or the different types of augmented reality. Um, Lots more to come on that. We're going to have some cool Royal Ballet stuff to show soon. Yeah, and I think that that is the key, is that a lot of people, if you're not in technology or you're not into technology, you're not going to know the differences between all of these different XR tech. So, you know, we're we're not just here to kind of tell you about what River do particularly, but we also are here to make sure you understand what's available in that that world and some of the news that we put across is obviously you know current in the different tech companies that are doing stuff in those areas but obviously when we kind of like talk about what we're doing we try to give you as much info as possible as to what it's for why we do it where it's gonna be and uh and and other practical uses for that particular technology so you know if i'm reverting back to talking about what i've just gone and done in california with tesla that stuff is going to be really really amazing immersive real content video content that was shot of real people doing real stuff and you get to passively watch it with no danger with no worry about health and safety i took that hit for you (laughs) instead and uh and and you will absorb that so much more than if you were just watching a screen or you were doing a powerpoint you know the reality of it is is that we have so many distractions that you know we need to find a way to cut out those distractions so that you actually do the things you need to do and firefighters obviously it's really important that they learn what they need to learn to save lives so you know we want that to be the main key point of why we do what we do is that it's going to advance the industries we put our technology into and then you jump into something that's more interactive. So those two sides, you've got the video side, then you've got an interactive side. Everything in the initial stage, or stage one, as Al likes to call it, is going to be real video capture. Immersive video, but real people doing real things or real interactivity with the real world, whereas the other stuff takes a lot longer and is more built in a games engine, is not real. It is simulation. and Go back to 3 dof, 6 dof. It's important, though, to have that, too, for the ability to learn, repeat, and do practical uh, tasks. So they have a home. Um, but then when we move into AR, that's very much about loading you with information, giving you experiences, allowing you to go away and talk about the experiences that you've experienced, uh, <laughs> advancing different uh, things, in this case, history. So... Uh, is um, it's exciting what River are doing, but we're always also open to anyone who's got some ideas and thinking outside the box. You know, when it comes to doing some cool tech stuff, you know, we're we're never a closed door. Yep, lots of things going on. There's 3D printers that are whirring and they keep turning up in the office. I think there's now like two or three big printers. I keep saying, can we make these go faster? I'm gonna this hold this cool. one up. Like this. this is the Kenworth Abbey. Absolutely. This is really cool. Like I, I saw the initial one get printed and then when I came in the week after, after you'd gone to that event, I was really disappointed that they'd given it away. I never got to see the finished one, so now I'm so glad we've done another one. Now we've got a bigger version. Yeah, it's cool. I want to see Warwick Castle printed now. But yeah, that'd be cool. That, and actually, that, that one in your hand is absolutely massive in real life. Look at the doorway inside. You can see a doorway. This is Louis' doorway. That's yeah, that's a tiny one. Visit it in real life. Yeah. It's just about six-year-old height so <laughs> then the doorway right. on the inside though there, that is huge and do you know the thing that's amazing have you seen the detail underneath mm. it's got some amazing detail underneath uh where there, there were some supports <laughs> under there the, the details were mega you want to get a camera in there and look up yeah i'm really really surprised that the, the this model i'm holding is so detailed um it's amazing It'd be cool to paint it but it's still cool as one block color it say hello like stone color can you say hello to mark potter because he's just watching all right mark how you doing dude um 
Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that looks like that is in episode 10. Or have we got more things? My phone just fell over. No, I think we have managed to hit the the magic almost hour mark, which is more than enough for anyone to hear me and Alex's voice for that amount of time. Um, I've run out of Tyrone photos to put on the screen. I know, and it's just got to start, you know, over the next period between now and the next podcast starts, it's just sort of on a come down from losing his TikTok title. So uh... We'll see, because the other day (laughs) I did put a few up. Actually, the other day we haven't spoke about it. I brushed them off now. I was like, so blasé. Give me the app. Give me the app. Tell me what the app is. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So tell me the app. Once Tyrone told me about his little cheeky, what, how many millions is it on? The big one. Uh, just don't I say it too like many 17.4 million. When he told me about his 17.4 million view one, I was like, okay, get me the app, let's have a go. So I downloaded the app, took it to the show, had a few goes around the Defender and stuff, but then went out for food with Ty to Miller and Carter to have some steak, horrible steak meal that we had. Um, and I just did a light, nice little 10 second video of Ty sat in the flood, eating Mate. his steak in the flood, and it's done 2.4 million. Wasn't the lakeside one that did actually sink? Um, <laughs> but lots of people did write about that saying they thought it was the lakeside uh, restaurant that oh. actually was on an old steamboat in a lake I outside of a shopping mall and it actually did flood and sink uh, so, I should have yeah. maybe played on that but yeah, but yeah that was my la- latest little hitter yeah, so um, with that being said, I was going to give you a bit of background as to what is happening with the pod. Obviously, our objective was always to try and do one a week. It has been a little bit challenging with certain situations. Obviously, we're back into travel season where we've been going away or Alex has been going to London riding bikes and damaging his back. Um, we're looking at maybe doing maybe one to two a month. I think that is a reasonable amount of time. We're going to get some more guests on. It's not going to always be me and Alex all the time we are going to get some fresh faces. I like in. it. We were nearly um, going to get Ross or Joe today, but yeah. that changed last minute. But I think starting soon, we will have some new news, some more people to talk to, and uh, and hopefully give you some cool content to watch and listen to. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed episode 10 of the Rapid Catcher podcast, and we'll catch you on the next one. Speak soon, everyone. Later, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>